Hello Internet, in this video we are going to be working with particle emitters. I'm not going to say what we're using them for, but I will give you a hint. It might be this. Anyway, uh, we are going to be specifically focusing on how to emit particles from a particle system without actually using an emitter. And so this is going to be multiple parts, I've been asked to kind of cut these down a bit. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to cut it down into as small of chunks as we can get. And so this is going to specifically focus on taking this, which is just using a, a basic emitter, turning this rate all the way down to zero. So this will eventually burn out. And then using an emitter that we write to handle that. So that's what we're going to be working on. And hopefully, everything goes smoothly. So let's see how this goes. Uh, one thing I've noticed in U Unity 2017, compute shaders, which we use to simulate the uh, compression of grass, that doesn't seem to work very well in Unity 2017. I don't know why, but it's black. In edit mode, it's just straight black. Uh, and so that's causing all of the grass to be flat, except for the wind, which kind of moves it along those axes. So you'll still see it a little bit, but not much. Uh, so that's that's a problem. But it works fine in play mode, so we're going to ignore that problem. Anyway, we're going to turn the rate over time down to zero. And then we are going to use this fire emitter. So... If I can catch back up on how this whole thing works, we have a size. Where is it? There it is. So we have a size for this grass field we're building. And it looks something like this. So we give it a size of say 75 by 75 like we did here. And then we generate textures for that. So the long story is eventually compute shaders are actually going to simulate how the fire interacts with the uh, terrain and so it's actually going to simulate how grass catches on fire with other adjacent instances as well as a few other things so we can actually prevent it with like paths or things like that and certain areas can actually just burn down and that will actually interact with the grass we could even add it to uh, affect say actually burning this so that parts of it will disappear all of that's going to be possible but it's going to take some time so we're we're kind of working that what i do want to do is take this size and we're actually just for this we're going to cast raycast down just like we're placing the grass but we're going to place fire so this fire emitter is actually going to base uh what was that called that'd be handy <laughs> Grass point cloud renderer. Cool. So let's grab that. And this will be our grass instance. And we're also going to want our particle system, which is going to be our fire particles. And so both of these are going to just be references we're going to pull in and use to complete this simulation. And so the way we're doing it this way, or why we're doing it this way, rather, <laughs> it this is going to allow us, so if we don't want fire to be an option, we can take that out fairly easily. Just removing this script is going to fix that. Uh, if we didn't do it this way, that wouldn't necessarily be the case. Then we are going to do a float emit per second. I think this makes sense. Uh, for right now, this will be fine. <clears throat> and we're also going to want a private timer. Yeah. And so every update, we're going to do timer plus equals the time delta. That's not how you do that. The delta time. And then we're going to multiply that by the emit per second. And then while the timer is greater than one because it's emit per second so we're actually going to count up and every 
one, the timer isn't counting seconds, it's actually counting the number of particles we should emit. Uh, so if we set this to some very high number, there could be multiple per frame, and so this will handle that. Or if it's less than one per frame, this should handle it as well. So that's going to handle that, hopefully. And then we need to emit fire for grass. And we're going to give it the grass instance to emit the fire from, and we'll give it the fire particles. And then we'll do timer minus equals one. So we're just going to emit one fire instance each tick, and that should be good. So we actually need to generate this. My hotkeys never work. It's really annoying. All right, <laughs> grass instance. We're going to find a random place within this uh, size. And so to do that, we are going to need, I guess we can do it this way. <laughs> so let's do a vector two and say this will be the position and it's going to be the grass instance. Uh, new vector two of the random dot value. Uh, we may need to import that times the grass instance dot x dot size dot x and a random value times the grass instance size dot y. So this is going to get a random value inside of the, the size, the square or rectangle of our grass. And then from that, we can actually extend what's going on here. System was included. Why was system included? Well, it's not anymore. So problem solved. That fixes our random. We have a random point now. And now our compute shader is working. Don't really know what's going on there, but okay, cool. <laughs> so uh, if, well, I should probably figure out how this is working. This is in game, this isn't gonna work. Okay, so it is centered. So this is just something I wanted to test. Uh, our grass is centered. I probably could have just looked that up, but by doing it this way, by making sure if it's centered or not, we can actually use that to our advantage. So this size is going to be a part of the position. We actually are going to want to subtract the grass instance dot size dot x divided by two. Uh, let's multiply by 0 0.5. That will be, I don't know if clearer is the better word, but I just prefer it. <laughs> So we'll do something like this. I think that's a little bit, little bit clearer. And there we go. So this is going to get us our grass instance and it's going to be allow us to center this uh, position that we just calculated on the, gr on the uh, grass instance. If we center it on that transform, we should have the X and the Y position to spawn our particle at. So now we need to actually raycast down so we're gonna do a physics raycast with a ray. <laughs> so let's build that ray. Ray, new ray. And this needs a position, which we happen to have. So let's do this transform dot, not this. Let's do the grass instance, transform position plus a new vector three. If we're doing that, let's make this a zero in the middle of there. That ought to do a lot better. And that way we're just throwing out that Y value, but we can actually add these a little bit easier now. So grass instance dot transform dot position plus the new position. So that position is local to our instance and then we want to do vector three dot down, which is going to be the angle of our ray. So our ray is casting down from this position. And I actually want to move it up 
a certain amount. Vector three dot up, multiply it by like a thousand. As long as we don't have any hills over a thousand, it should work. Uh, it's it's not super clean, but we can we can clear that up later. This is kind of getting us to the point where we can actually emit fire on our terrain dynamically. Once we get that working, we can actually kind of build on that. So we also want a ray cast hit so we can actually get to what if we hit and what we hit. So we're going to do something like that. Uh, we have our ray and let's get our hit object out. So we're going to cast it down. It should be an infinite ray. If it hits anything, take the output and then we'll grab that point. So hit dot point. I think that's what, yeah, impact point in world space where the ray hit the collider. So we should <laughs> be able to just do emit one and give it a position. Navigating to definition. Nice. Cool. So emit can take a position, a velocity, a size, a lifetime, and a color. I don't really want to give it all of that. <laughs> and just doing, doing a count is going to use the given emitter, which we don't really want either. What are these emit params? Well, there's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so let's see what happens if I just set one of these. What happens? Can we play with something like that? If I do emit new emit params, I don't think it likes this. <laughs> Ah, particle system that emit params and I want to give it a position equal to the new vector three of our position dot X and our position dot Y and our position dot Z. Now I totally understand this is wrong. That's sort of the point. I'm just curious if this is actually going to work at all. Cannot convert from particle system to emit params. What else was it expecting? A count. It wants a count. We can give it a count. We just need one of them. Everything else is handled with sub emitters in the, in the particle system I'm using. So you create one particle and then that handles like the base flame and then everything else, the smoke, the sparks, everything is all done with sub emitters. So we just need to emit one. And then, hmm, well, that's a good way to do this. We're going to emit this at that position. That should be fine, actually. So the other thing, let's do position.y equals our hit.point.y. Actually, we don't need any of that. I can literally just do this. Why not? Because the hit point is going to be at, we're already going straight down. So our position already has been put into that ray. It's straight down. So it's not going to change. Hopefully if it is. We're doing something wrong. Uh, so that should work. The only thing that's going to happen is it's going to move up or down. And so if we hit something, we have a, a new Y coordinate that gets set in the point and everything else should work. So theoretically, this is all good. <laughs> Very skeptical about this, but we'll find out. So if I do a fire emitter, we need the fire particle system like that and the grass render like that. And let's emit. 20 per second. What happens? Don't crash. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, they're in the sky. 
So that's less awesome. It would appear that we may, may have done this math wrong. I may have used a, a Z instead of a Y or something like that. Because they all appear to be spawning in this general direction, which is actually not Oh, <laughs> derp, let's set the particle system to operate in world coordinates instead of local space and then everything will work. Ta-da, cool. So now we have fire that is spawning all over our terrain. It should be matching the height of the terrain. Uh, there may be some problems with our particle where it's actually spawning in the middle of the terrain. But that, that's my problem. I can fix that. That's nothing wrong with our script. That's wrong with the fire. So we can just change the particle system to account for that. But other than that, we can now spawn fire across the entire grass, which looks all right, but we can make it much better. And we'll be, we'll be doing that in the next few videos. So what we're going to be working on is first taking and building a burn map, I think is what I'm going to call it which is actually going to uh, effectively we're going to sample points in that map until we find one that we can actually drop the point. So we're effectively going to be finding parts that are burning if there are any. And so that is going to actually drop fire. I don't know the best way to do that, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And then after that, we need to actually calculate how to spread. The fire and i think that's going to be part of our uh, compute engine or compute shader uh, and that's just going to simulate actually spreading it uh, and burning things down so they stop burning and all, all of that is going to be handled in a compute shader so we can do really complicated burns and it should all work like you could burn like a logo or something and or just do crazy shapes and it should all work so yeah that's that's coming up next but that's it for this video I uh, kind of want to keep them short and quick so we can kind of, I don't know, this is, th I feel like this part especially is more useful than just burning grass uh, because there's a lot of reasons where you may want to emit a particle at some point. And so this lets you do that. So I'll leave it here and we'll pick it up in the next one. So if there's anything you guys want to want to see, any suggestions you have to make the, these videos better. Let me know in the comments and I can definitely take a look. Uh, other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. So until then, see you, internet.